So today we're going to do the handover video on the Chasson 708. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. Coming to your passenger side, you've got your fill-up points. Open up your passenger door. And then notice that underneath here, you've got your diesel fill-up point. And then just underneath, you'll have your add blue. Whilst we're here, you've got your tyre pressures which are on the door sill. And then you've also got your remiss cab lines which are fitted to this specific model. To operate these, simply pinch the clip, just like so, and then pull down. I typically find that it's a lot easier to pull down and lead from the bottom to then clip in. These are on a magnetic strip, and as I say, they will just clip in, just like the front ones here as well. Just take that back up, so you can slide back up and clip into place. With your MS cab blinds, and this goes for everything within the vehicle, if it feels like it's being forced, then you're probably doing something wrong. Um, so just take a minute just to think about what you're doing, um, and then just have a look. Moving on, you've then got your 230 volt hookup point. So when you're on the uh, uh, when you're on the campsite, you can hook up to electrics. You've then got your convenience locker. I'll just open that up for you now. Once open, you'll notice that you've got your water tank on one side, and behind this panel, you've then got your RCD breaker and also your fuses. So, just to talk you through, as I say, your fuses are on this side, and then underneath this flat, as I say, you've got your RCD breaker which if the vehicle ever trips, you can come to here. On the other side, you've got your, your uh, water tank. Your fresh water tank will take about 120 litres, and to fill this up, pop this out, take off the cap, and then simply put the hose pipe in. You can fill, then fill up the system, and when it comes out, obviously, you know that it's full. On the vehicle, you've got three main drain downs. You've got one for your fresh water tank, which is here. You've got uh, one for your wastewater tank which is on the other side of the vehicle and then finally you've got a boiler drain down point which is on the inside of the vehicle firstly for your uh, water tank as I say you've got two little drain down points which you can use for this and two ways to drain it down so the first option is done by this clip here and what this will do it's a brown clip what this will do is it will drain the entire system down to 20 litres for example if you're moving off site and you're not sure whether you're going to get any water on the next stop um, you can remain, uh, keep water in the vehicle. As they recommend, if you are travelling with water, try and travel with a maximum of 20 litres due to weight distribution and payload. Um, one thing to note though is when you are draining this system down, obviously open up this valve, go onto the inside, activate your pump, and what that'll do is then allow it to drain down to 20 litres. To drain down the entire thing, so to, to drain down the entire 120 litres, what you need to do, just put this back up, you'll notice a sticker, which is just here. This indicates where your drain down point is for your fresh water, which is underneath the vehicle, which I'll show you now. Once underneath the vehicle, you'll notice you've got two pipes. You've got this first one here, which is your breather pipe. So don't be concerned that that's got nothing in uh, on. As, as, as I say, that's a breather pipe. And then the one behind it is your drain down for your fresh water. You'll notice that you've got a black cap on the end there just to stop the water from coming out. And obviously when, to dr when draining this, all you've got to do is remove that cap and that'll drain the entire system down. As I said be uh, before, that is just in line with your convenience locker, just straight down there and underneath the vehicle. Moving on to the back of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got your trim event, which is there. So that's for your, uh, your heating. And then finally, you've got your gas locker, which is there. Like so. The main thing with the gas that you need to know is obviously, when you are travelling, make sure that you travel with the gas bottle off. Because um, obviously of health and safety, so make sure you do that. Coming over to the back, you've noticed that up at the top you've got your reversing camera. And then another entry point into your garage, which is at the back. Coming around to the other side of the vehicle, you'll notice that you've got your another point into your garage. Just by turning them, you can then open the door and you've got full access. Whilst I'm here, you'll notice that you've got your awning pole, which will operate the awning. I'll talk you through that in a minute. And then you've also got your height adjustable bed, which is at the moment in its highest position. 
Moving past the garage, just before I get to the, uh, the rear wheel, you'll notice that you've got another one of these stickers. This indicates where your wastewater drain down point is. As I say, these two drain downs are external to the vehicle. Your boiler drain down, which I'll show you later, is on the inside. For your wastewater, all you need to do, look underneath the vehicle, you'll notice that grey pipe there, and then simply pull this handle towards you, and that'll empty all the wastewater out, which is just underneath there. And what we say with all your drain down points whilst I'm on the topic, uh, since it's just water, what we say is leave them all open when travelling because the vibrations of the road are going to make sure that all the water is dumped out. And as I say, it's just water so no harmful chemicals are going to uh, harm anything. Moving on, we've got your w WC, over the no otherwise known as your toilet cassette. Open that up and there is your cassette toilet. So when emptying this, all you need to do is simply lift this handle up and simply drag out. On the cassette, you'll notice that you've got an orange button right at the back there. So when you pull this all the way out, simply flick the funnel out, pull out, and then click that orange button, which is at the back, as I showed you. That's going to release a vacuum, which is in the cassette, and empty all the system, uh, empty all the system in one steady slurry. Once you've done that, Put a bit of water in, just to uh, wash it out, and once again, just empty that. Just on, on the top of the cassette, you'll also notice this button here. Uh, that makes contact with the blade um, to open and close the cassette, so make sure that that's in the position. The main thing that you always need to remember with your toilet cassette is when removing it, always make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed before doing so. If it is open and you go to remove this, it'll feel stuck, and what can often happen is it'll get jammed. Some customers in the past have ripped this out and that'll rip out the entire system um, and be uh, a mess. So we need to make sure that we don't do that. As I say, if it feels like it's been, if it's stuck, don't, don't pull it out, don't force it, you're doing something wrong. So always make sure that that blade on the toilet is closed. Just like that. Always lock this unit as well. Finally, before I move on to the inside, you'll notice that you've got your fridge vents here, just down there. Uh, and then finally, you've got your awning. Briefly, just to talk you through this, how to operate it, all you need to do is get your winding lever, connect it onto the point there, and then simply wind out. Wind it out to a point that you can then reach. Uh, and then using the legs that drop down on the inside, uh, simply fold them out, let it take the weight of the awning, and then simply walk it out. This will come out about three to four metres. Obviously, when it's a, if it's raining, try not to use the awning as you'll have to dry it out. And for example, if your um, if the awning is uh, sorry, if the if the uh, weather is uh, blowing a gale or there's any slight breeze, don't use your awning because, as you can imagine, it's like a, having a massive sail on the side of your vehicle. So just be sensible with it. That concludes the outside of the vehicle. We're now moving on to the inside. Just in line with your uh, habitation door, you'll notice that you've got your control panel. You've got your Truma uh, control up here, and then the main control panel for the vehicle. I'll firstly go over this. So firstly, to operate this, you'll notice that initially, if I turn that on, you've got your master switch. Your master switch, I'll just turn these bits off. Your master switch uh, activates everything. So that'll allow everything to get going in the vehicle. Um, next to that, if I click this, that is for your interior lights. When I click that, you'll notice that your lights turn on. You've then got individual uh, switches just to turn off uh, individual lights uh, if you want. Moving across, you've then got your pump, which will activate the pump. Firstly, with the pump, obviously, make sure that the pump is always turned off um, if you've not got any water in the vehicle. Only run the pump if you've got water in the van, because uh, you'll simply burn it out if, not, if that's not the case. Um, one, however, when you're on site and you're filled up with water, turn your pump on and go to all your taps and then turn your taps on. Turn them to hot and then what that's going to do is pull water from the fresh water tank, pulling it through the boiler system and then finally out of the tap. And what we're doing here is priming your system. So initially it's going to spurt and splutter but when it's, red, uh, when it's running steadily you prime your system. Once you've done that for the hot water, flick it over to the cold and do the exact same. Once you've done that, you can leave all your taps on. And when I say taps, this I also mean your shower. Uh, so you can leave everything on. Um, uh, sorry, you can leave the pump on just with your... Because uh, on all of your taps, you've got a micro switch. So when you activate that, 
it'll activate the system and turn on. Just like you would at home. Next to the pump, the final button at the top, is another light and that's for your door light which is external to the vehicle. Coming down you've also got some more buttons, these are indication buttons. So the first one is your habitation battery, you know that because it's like the back of a motorhome in a battery. If I click that, it'll show you level. Next to that is your vehicle battery, you can see that you've got the front of a vehicle in a battery there. If I click that, again it'll show you level. And then finally on this side you've also got, as you can see, your fresh water drain down, uh, fresh water level rather, which I'll show you we're, we're nearly full at the moment. Finally, just on this side, you can change and alter the brightness of the screen if you do choose so. Moving on from your control panel, you've next got your Truma heating system. So to turn this on, all you've got to do, simply hold the button, and that'll turn it on. Press again at the button. Everything below the line is what you want to select. By turning the dial, you can select through the options. Firstly, you've got your vehicle's temperature. If I click that, you can obviously alter your vehicle's temperature like so. This will go all the way up to 30 degrees. Just click back there. Next, you've then got your water temperature. You've got the option of eco, hot or boost. Eco is about 40 degrees. You'll be using that when you're having a shower. Hot is about 70 degrees. You'll be using that when you're uh, washing your hands and, and doing the pots and pans. And then finally, boost concentrates on heating the water and it'll stop heating the vehicle and start heating the water. Just move back from that. Next, you've got your fuel. So if I click that, you'll notice where it says fuel. You've got a couple of options. So you've got mix one, which is a mixture of gas and one kilowatt electric. You've got mix two, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric. You've then got EL1, which is just one kilowatt electric. And then EL2, which is two kilowatt electric, depending on how much power you are supplied. Finally, you've then got your fan. You've got a few options with this, as I've not selected anything, it's only giving me vents at the moment, but it'll give you a couple of options um, depending on the intensity you want the fan at. Just along the bottom, just going through the, the options again. At the bottom, you can set a timer for when you want it to start. You've then got your clock, which you can change accordingly. And then finally, you've got your settings. In your settings, the only thing you need to know really is your reset button, which is at the bot, uh, which is at the um, at the very bottom of the menu. Um, and you only need to know this if, for example, you get an error code. So you need to go to here. And that's your Truma system. Just quickly as well to turn this system off, all you've got to do hold the button, and eventually it'll just say off and turn the system down, like that. Next, whilst I'm in the lounge area, I'll just show you this on your window. You've got your blackout blind, which is like that. And these are on all your windows. So as I say, blackout blinds there. And then up at the top, you've got your fly screen, which will connect there. Just like so. Whilst we're in the lounge area, underneath your lounge um, bench seat, just to remove the cushions and just to show you, you have got your travelling seat, which is just underneath there. To lift this up, all you need to do is simply turn that toggle, that black toggle, lift it up and then rearrange the cushions accordingly to, to seat forwards. At the moment you'll notice that your table is down. This is a manual table, so to raise this you've got a red clip which is underneath here. Pull up on that and that'll allow you to, um, to raise the table and then obviously to get this down do the exact same, just apply pressure and weight onto the top of the table. At the moment it's in the down position to allow for the bed. You've got the bed here, just like so. To operate the bed, this will go halfway. To do so, you'll have a plastic box, which is just in your cap, uh, in the cab here. At the moment, we've got the key in. All you need to do, turn the key to activate the system, and then that'll activate your bed. Obviously, make sure that the area is clear before doing so. Come to your kitchen, and you'll notice that you've got your bed button there. If I press that, that'll then lower the bed like so. With your bed, you can keep all your bedding on, just with your pillows, stick them at the front, and then you're good to go. It'll stop automatically once it's up at the top. That concludes the lounge area. Moving on to your kitchen. Your kitchen, you've got your hob. Um, you've got your oven and grill down here, and also bits for storage. 
we've talked about obviously priming your system so we're fine with that and also your windows and stuff like that with your kitchen windows you've also got a venting option with these clips here opposite the kitchen is your fridge your fridge is a three-way fridge because there's three ways to fuel it so what you've got first one you've got the mains so when you're plugged up um, and you're on on a site you can run the fridge off 230 volts the next option is 12 volt, which is your leisure battery. A lot of people think when they're wild camping, they can run the fridge off the leisure battery, but you can't. It'll just simply, it's just simply needs too much power. So it would just uh, completely flatten your battery. So if that's the case, when you're wild camping, it leads me on to your next fuel, which is your gas. So you need to run it off the gas. And your leisure battery is purely for when you're traveling. This vehicle is fitted with an alternator, which will set, um, charge your leisure battery, which can then charge your fridge and power it. Just to turn this on, I'll activate now. You'll see your options there. At the moment, I've selected A for you. That stands for automatic. So whichever fuel I have will automatically be assigned. You'll then notice that you've also got your van's temperature here, uh, for the fridge temperature rather, which can alternate through there. At the top of the fridge, you've got your freezer, and then you've also got your fridge, which is at the bottom. In regards to the fridge, the fridge does a very good job at, um, at maintaining temperature, but doesn't do the best of jobs at um, getting the uh, getting the, the fridge, uh, getting food rather, down to temperature. So what I recommend is, if you want things to be cooled in the fridge, put cool things in. And if you want frozen things to be in the freezer, put frozen things in. Because as I say, it'll do a very good job at maintaining the temperature. To turn the fridge off, simply hold and the panel turn off. Moving into the bedroom area, you'll notice that your bed at the moment is raised all the way to the top, as I mentioned in the in the garage briefly. With your bed, this is fitted with a, an easy bed system, which you can then see by that sticker there. So at the moment, as I say, it's, it's raised up at the top. To lower this, all you've got to do is connect your winder into the hole and then simply wind down the bed. That'll then change the height and alter uh, between, uh, between obviously different heights, depending on what you've got in the garage. So dead simple. Moving through into the bedroom area, you've got on one side your um, bathroom uh, with your toilet and on the other side your shower, which we've also spoken about in regards to priming. The main thing that you need to know in the bathroom area is your cassette toilet and how to use it. So as I briefly mentioned outside, you've got something called a blade which is on the toilet. So during use, the blade needs to be open. That then opens the cassette and all your waste will then be able to drop into the cassette. Once you've, uh, once you've, once all the waste has been disposed of in the cassette, you then need to go to that blue button there, click that, and that'll activate your flush and flush the system. Once you've done that, all you need to do, close the blade by pushing it away from you. And as I say, that'll stop any, um, any nasty odours from, from, from escaping. And you need to always make sure that that's done after use. So then when you come to empty the cassette, you know that that's closed. As I briefly mentioned, that is your flush, which is at the back, which is the blue button. It's one thing to mention as well, that that will only work when your pump's on, so just make sure that the pump is on when doing that. You'll then get a red light on that panel there, just to indicate whether this, uh, whether the cassette is full. Which will often be a red light, obviously once you, once you get that you need to empty it. Finally moving next to the bed, you'll find that you've got your final drain down point, which is your uh, boiler drain down point. As I mentioned, you've got three. You've got your fresh water and your waste water, which is your external, and then this boiler drain down. To close this area, all you need to do, at the moment it's in the closed position with the diamond facing this way, and the tab on the side is in. To open this, all you've got to do is rotate the diamond. You'll then notice a black nib, which will pop up onto the top of the diamond, and then at the side, a blue tab has just popped out. To close this, turn it, and then simply press the blue tab in, like so. Obviously, you need to make sure that you do that um, and drain down your boiler every time after use, uh, predominantly in the winter, uh, because you don't want frozen water in the system. But obviously, when you come to fill it up, always make sure that this area is closed, because if it's not, when you come to prime your boiler, uh, you'll just get water trickling out the vehicle and it just won't work. So make sure that's that's closed during use and then one not in use simply open it up Just to empty like that 
that concludes the handover on the Chasson Titanium 708. I hope you enjoyed.